This video provides a step-by-step -step guide on how government contractors can achieve compliance with detailed cybersecurity requirements established by the U.S. Department of Defense, specifically Defense Federal Acquisition Regulation Supplement, DFARS, Clause 252-204-7012, entitled Safeguarding Covered Defense Information and Cyber Incident Reporting. Unfortunately, cyberspace today is full of numerous threats. Cyber attackers routinely utilize computer viruses, worms, Trojan horses, ransomware, and other methods to break into or to sabotage computer information systems. These cyber attackers often steal valuable information, such as intellectual property, I'm in. and then sell this information on hidden portions of the internet, called the dark web. Today, the threat to our cybersecurity is more serious than ever. During the last several years, we have seen the rise of highly sophisticated, well-organized, and well-funded cyber attacks from terrorist organizations and state-sponsored groups. It is now well known that most nation states have cyber warfare, espionage, and intelligence capabilities. Government agencies are often the targets of cyber attacks. However, what is less known is that because of their close proximity and relationship with the government, government contractors are also attractive targets. Contractors often have intellectual property and valuable information on their systems related to government equipment, property, programs, services, and operations. In recent years, there has been a strong push in the federal government to ensure that government contractors are implementing measures to safeguard their information systems. One branch of the U.S. government that has been particularly active in issuing regulations related to cybersecurity is the U.S. Department of Defense, or DOD for short. DOD has established rules for defense contractors related to cybersecurity. Most prominently, all DOD solicitations and contracts, except those for commercial off-the-shelf items, are incorporating Defense Federal Acquisition Regulation Supplement, DFARS, Clause 252-204-7012 entitled Safeguarding Covered Defense Information and Cyber Incident Reporting. During this presentation, we will refer to this clause throughout as the DFARS Clause. The DFARS Clause requires contractors and subcontractors to do the following. One, provide adequate security to safeguard covered defense information that resides on or is transmitted through a contractor's internal information system or network. Two, report cyber incidents that affect a covered contractor information system, or the covered defense information residing therein, or that affect the contractor's ability to perform requirements designated as operationally critical support. Three, submit malicious software discovered and isolated in connection with a reported cyber incident to DOD's Cyber Crime Center. Four, if requested, Submit media and additional information to support a DOD damage assessment. 5. Flow down these requirements in subcontracts to subcontractors involved in operationally critical support or where subcontract performance involves covered defense information. Please refer to the following links. For specific details about these requirements and the DFARS clause, you should refer to the clause itself and the frequently asked questions about the clause provided by DOD. The DFARS clause is structured to ensure that controlled, unclassified DOD information residing on a contractor's internal information system is safeguarded from cyber incidents and that any consequences associated with the loss of this information is assessed and minimized via a cyber incident reporting and damage assessment process. In addition, the clause creates a single, uniform approach that defense contractors must follow to protect covered defense information. Covered defense information means unclassified, controlled technical information or other information as described in the Controlled Unclassified Information CUI, registry that requires safeguarding or dissemination controls pursuant to and consistent with law, regulations, and government-wide policies, and is 1. marked or otherwise identified in the contract, task order, or delivery order, and provided to the contractor by or on behalf of DOD in support of the performance of the contract, or 2. collected, developed, received, transmitted, used, 
or stored by or on behalf of the contractor in support of the performance of the contract. Examples of such information could include technical information, including research and engineering data, engineering drawings, specifications, standards, process sheets, manuals, technical reports, technical orders, data sets, studies, and computer software and source code, among others. The DFARS clause applies to covered contractor information systems, which is defined as an unclassified information system that is owned or operated by or for a contractor and that processes, stores, or transmits covered defense information. A covered contractor information system is specifically an unclassified information system. To safeguard covered defense information on a covered contractor information system, DOD contractors are required to provide adequate security on such systems. Adequate security is defined in the DFARS clause as implementing, at a minimum, the security requirements outlined in a publication developed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology that is commonly referred to as NIST Special Publication 800-171. You can download a full copy of the latest version of NIST Special Publication 800-171 at this link. The DFARS clause instructs DOD contractors to implement the NIST SP 800-171 security requirements as soon as practical, but no later than December 31, 2017. It is of paramount importance that defense contractors comply with the provisions of the DFARS clause if covered defense information resides on or is transmitted through their internal information systems or network. We cannot emphasize this point strongly enough. Defense contractors are required by the DFARS clause to provide adequate security on all covered contractor information systems that process, store, or transmit covered defense information. To provide adequate security, defense contractors must implement, at a minimum, NIST SP 800-171 immediately. It is the contractor's responsibility to determine whether it has implemented the NIST standard, as well as any other security measures necessary to provide adequate security. What does it mean to implement NIST SP 800-171? NIST Special Publication 800-171 was developed to outline a set of security requirements that should be implemented to protect contractor information systems. The NIST security requirements are organized into 14 families and 110 separate security requirements. A variety of potential security solutions can be implemented to satisfy these requirements. There is no single one-size-fits-all security solution, and each DOD contractor needs to understand how to meet the security requirements for their specific operating environment. In December of 2016, the NIST SP 800-171 security requirements were revised. Revision 1 indicates that contractors must create a system security plan, which describes the system at issue and how the specified security requirements outlined in NIST SP 800-171 are met. Revision 1 also instructs contractors to also create plans of action that describe how any unimplemented security requirements will be met and what mitigations or defense efforts will be put into place until those unimplemented security requirements are met. Defense contractors may document the system security plan and plans of action as separate or combined documents in any chosen format. After revision one, DOD issued a memorandum regarding DFARS Clause 252-204-7012. The guidance acknowledges that a contractor could achieve compliance with NIST SP 800-171 in two specific ways. By one, either fully implementing the 110 security requirements outlined in NIST SP 800-171 revision one, and documenting such full implementation, or 
2022 by implementing all the security requirements possible by December 31, 2017 and documenting in a system security plan and plan of action what requirements were implemented, how any unimplemented security requirements would be met in the future, and how any planned mitigations or defenses would be implemented until the full security requirements are met. Therefore, while it is prudent and advisable that a contractor attempt to meet all 110 security requirements, it is not absolutely necessary that all 110 requirements be met in order to comply with NIST SP 800-171, so long as you have an adequate system security plan and plan of action in place by the deadline. Regardless of whether you have all the security requirements fully implemented or still have some outstanding requirements, you will need to properly document your compliance in a system security plan and plan of action by the deadline. DOD envisions that it will consider a contractor's system security plan and plan of action as critical inputs when analyzing the overall risk associated with having the defense contractor process, store, or transmit covered defense information. DOD may also analyze system security plans and plans of action to determine if it is advisable to pursue an agreement or contract with the contractor. Therefore, Contractors should be aware that the extent of NIST SP 800-171 compliance could become a competitive discriminator, especially when it comes to contracts that deal with sensitive covered defense information. What exactly do I have to do to achieve NIST 800-171 compliance? To get started, you should download two specific resources that are available on the same webpage as this video. The first resource is the NIST MEP Cybersecurity Self-Assessment Handbook. This document was developed and published by NIST MEP, the same folks who wrote the NIST SP 800-171 Cybersecurity Requirements. While the intended audience of the handbook is manufacturers, it can be utilized by really any contractor to conduct a compliance assessment. Next, download the GTPAC Security Assessment Report system security plan and plan of action template, which is also available on the same website as this video. The Georgia Tech Procurement Assistance Center is creating a template so that clients can use that document to assess their 110 points that NIST requires and to show what they are currently doing and how they are going to be meeting all the other requirements. It helps organizations have a coherent, active plan for making sure that controlled, unclassified information doesn't get into the wrong hands. The goal of the template is to assist contractors in documenting their compliance and developing a system security plan and plan of action. After both resources have been downloaded, four steps must generally be taken. Step one, in the template, you should fill out section 4.1, the company profile portion. This will provide some general information about the contractor, including the contractor's name, point of contact, address, telephone, fax, email, and other general information about the contractor and line of business. Step 2. In the template, you should fill out the general overview of the system portion at Section 4.2. This provides basic system security plan information about the covered information system at issue and describes, as required by NIST SP 800-171 Revision 1, 1, the system boundary, 2, the operational environment, and 3, the relationship with or connections to other systems. While a system security plan should also include information regarding how the security requirements are implemented, we will provide this information later on when addressing Step 4. Step 3. You should use the NIST MEP Handbook to conduct an assessment of your information system and document the results of this assessment for each security requirement in Section 4.3 of the template. Remember, the Handbook provides a step-by-step -step guide to assessing a contractor's information system against the security requirements. While you will use the Handbook to conduct the assessment, the results of the assessment are to be marked 
recorded, and documented for each of the 110 controls in Section 4.3 of the template. For each requirement, specifically, you are required to indicate whether your company fully meets the security requirement, yes. Your company does not meet the security requirement, no. Your company partially meets the security requirement, partially. The security requirement does not apply to your company's environment, does not apply. Or, your company has taken an alternative but equally effective approach to meeting the security requirement, alternative approach. The documentation in the template regarding what requirements are met or not met is sometimes called a security assessment report because it includes information which can be used to determine what security controls are implemented or not implemented. Step 4. Finally, in the template, either during the course of the assessment or shortly thereafter, you must provide detailed answers to the system security plan and plan of action questions for each security requirement listed in Section 4.3. Remember, contractors are required to have a system security plan that outlines what NIST security requirements have been met and a plan of action that describes how any unimplemented security requirements will be met and how any planned mitigations will be implemented. Your system security plan and plan of action may be combined into a single document. We have designed the system security plan and plan of action questions in Section 4.3 to elicit the required information. Therefore, if you fully and precisely answer the questions for each security requirement, you should achieve compliance. In summary, you should review each requirement listed in Section 4.3 and answer the security plan and plan of action questions. By answering the questions and providing the required information for each requirement, you will be creating the required system security plan and plan of action needed to achieve compliance. Specifically, a completely filled out section 4.0 through 4.3 of the template will result in the creation of a security assessment report of what NIST SP 800-171 Revision 1 security controls have been implemented or met. A system security plan that details the system boundary, the operational environment, the relationships with or connections to other systems, and how the security requirements are implemented or how the contractor plans to meet these requirements, and a plan of action that describes how any unimplemented security requirements will be met and how any planned mitigations will be implemented. Government contractors nowadays abide by NIST 800-171 because in the near future, you're gonna be great on that as far as being awarded contractors. When you go a proposal to get some new work, they're gonna look at what your NIST certification says compared to ones that does not have a NIST implementation. That may be a mitigating factor that you don't win a contract because contractor A does have it and contractor B does not have compliance measures sitting in place. So who's most trustworthy for the government to trust in is the one who has NIST standards. If you are a contractor and need assistance in completing any of the four steps mentioned above, including the NIST MEP assessment, or need help filling out the provided template, we encourage you to contact your local procurement technical assistance center. You can find a list of the PTACs in your area on the Association for Procurement Technical Assistance Center website at the link provided. For Georgia-based companies, you can contact the Georgia Tech Procurement Assistance Center, or GTPAC. GTPAC's website is www.gtpac.org. If you are a manufacturer, you should reach out to the local NIST Manufacturing Extension Partnership, or MEP program. There are MEP centers in all 50 states and Puerto Rico that are dedicated to serving small and medium-sized manufacturers. In Georgia, the local MEP is Georgia MEP. Georgia MEP's website is www.gamep.org. Georgia MEP can help Georgia-based manufacturers get through their compliance process as well. Thank you for viewing this special presentation. Good luck everyone in meeting the cybersecurity requirements. If you need assistance, we are here to help.